This fleet equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Morgan, editor of Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Today, we're talking with Thomas Healy, CEO of Highland. Thomas, good to see you again. Thanks for coming back. Uh, Lots to talk about here. Thanks for having me back on again. No, it's an exciting time and uh, looking forward to, to getting to share more of what's going on and just discussing what's new in the industry. As uh, everyone uh, that's following this can, knows, I mean, things are moving at a fast, fast pace right now. Holy smokes, that's true. Before we started recording, we were just talking about how we talked not even six months ago and things have changed. So glad to connect with you here and kind of guide me and us through what, what you're seeing and what's happening. So let's start with that overall sustainability conversation because i kind of feel like that's how the industry is moving now electric trucks a good number of them have launched you have your axle offering uh uh the hybrid axle on the market in addition to some other offerings and it's really becoming okay how do i make my fleet sustainable not how do i make my fleet one solution or the other right when you're talking with fleets what do you recommend in terms of overall sustainability strategy and, and how do you see that planning going forward in the next couple of years yeah. so the first is starting with the fleets i mean i think the the sustainability push is here and it's here to stay and it's becoming real right i mean there's always kind of been the the push on oh we need to go to greener we need to reduce emissions and we've you know there's been huge advancements after treatment systems and everything but you know now we're getting to a point where large corporations frankly the guys who pay to ship stuff are now coming out with mandates that they're moving towards either reductions in emissions or even going to zero emissions right i mean i think that's the big push that we saw come out of amazon originally is there's a target there to go to zero uh, emissions for their whole organization Obviously, trucking is a huge part of that. And so, uh, you know, I think, you know, we normally think of trucking as, you know, first is, you know, let's figure out how to get things from point A to point B as as cheap as possible and, as, you know, be able to offer those services uh, as inexpensively as possible. But now I think it's a new, it's a shakeup. It's a new mix that's going to be taking place here of we got to worry about what are the tailpipe emissions coming out of these vehicles or what's the overall emissions from them. And, you know, we're seeing this shift towards electrification, a lot more players coming into the space. And I think uh, we're starting to see the different strategies take hold, right? I think, you know, we're seeing uh, the OEMs bring, bring forward fully electric local delivery vehicles. They are range limited, but that's good for that type of application, right? Because you don't want a huge battery pack if you don't need it. Uh, then you have other players that are more going after the long haul space, which is where Hylion's playing right now. Right, right. Yeah, and that's a space that's really shaken up now. Hydrogen is coming more into the conversation, but you've been doing this while we've been in the hybrid uh, hybrid axle uh, outfitted truck before. We've ridden in it, we've seen how it operates. Uh, more recently, though, you've made a push into renewable natural gas. What, what prompted that move? What's your view of that market? And do you see it being another niche or, or do you see some expanding growth there? Yeah, so our vision is we see this push towards electrification, but there's going to be different types of solutions that are great for different types, different parts of the market, right? It's not a one size fits all solution. So we see our hybrid solution as a great way to get a step into electrification. And then we've recently announced the Hypertruck solution, which is a fully electric drivetrain. So, you know, rear axle purely driven off of electric power. But then we actually use an onboard generator in order to produce electricity as you're going. So best way to think about it is you're kind of bringing that power plant with you, right? So as opposed to plugging into the grid to recharge, we're actually producing the electric electricity locally on the truck. And that's where the renewable natural gas comes into play because we can actually use RNG or CNG to actually produce electricity at the truck level. And what we found is it offers a lot less cost of operation compared to a normal BEV truck. We can get away with a lot smaller battery pack And it also offers uh, even a stronger emissions profile than even plugging into the grid. So the truck, you know, producing the electricity locally is actually cleaner uh, than using grid electricity. And so that's where we see that as, you know, a great step for the the industry to be able to move into electric long haul trucking. And then I think there's a lot of discussion, as you mentioned, around hydrogen and fuel cell, right? Is is that going to be the way of the future? And, you know, we believe in, in hydrogen and fuel cell as well. We're actually designing our powertrain to be able to be agnostic. So as fuel cell technology and hydrogen infrastructure gets built out, 
we have the ability to switch out a, a natural gas generator to a, a hydrogen generator. And uh, the rest of the powertrain stays the same though. So we're, we're kind of future-proofing ourselves in that capacity. Uh, and we'll see, I think hydrogen has a lot of promise, but there's a lot of pieces that still need to come into play in order to get to a hydrogen future, <laughs> hydrogen infrastructure versus that natural gas and renewable natural gas, it's already there. No, and I mean, it's a great, uh, 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 parallel to what fleets are already used to on the the APU side as well, right? Uh, uh, and having being that on on the diesel, being able to supplement that, save a little bit on fuel on those certain applications. But in this regard, kind of you brought that range extension to completely green renewable uh, energy uh, application. Very cool. Uh, is 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 the conversation now tail you know we've talked about tailpipe emissions very important and trying to get rid of those but the renewable part people are latching on more to right we're hearing people say it's great that the truck has no emissions but we also need the source from which it comes to have less or no emissions right is that something that fleet should pay attention to is that in their conversation right now when you talk to them or is it still just focused on the truck right now yeah, so I think the important thing to focus on is well to wheel and kind of overall emissions, right? So to take an electric truck, plug it in and say, hey, this is a zero polluting vehicle. Well, you really need to look at where did that electricity come from, right? If if it came from wind and solar, that's fantastic. But if it came from a coal fired power plant, we're not doing much good for the environment, right? Uh, and so that's where, um, you know, it's, it's really looking at well to wheel. And as we see some of these larger companies kind of put out their, uh, their statements of their movement to, you know, reduce reductions in emissions or they're moving to, to zero emissions, like we mentioned Amazon before, they're looking at well to wheel. They're not just looking at what comes out of the tailpipe, right? So, uh, so from that standpoint, I think it's important to look at the whole the whole picture. And you know, this renewable natural gas is is pretty fascinating and one that a lot of people aren't paying attention to or haven't heard of before. But you know, it's it's basically the same as natural gas, but it, it's coming from a different source. So it's actually coming from uh, capturing uh, emissions coming off of landfills and dairy farms, things that normally would have been a pollutant to the atmosphere. Uh, as opposed to just letting them gas off, now uh, farms are actually capturing those gases, pumping them into the pipelines. And when you actually go use that in a vehicle to drive the vehicle, it, you don't have the same level of emissions. You have a lot less. So what it actually creates is an opportunity where you can even have net carbon negative or below zero emissions profiles, right? So then you get to a point where it's actually cleaner for an organization to go drive the truck as opposed to not drive it because, you know, the gas came from what would have been pollutants originally. Right. No, for sure. Definitely amazing technology. This is all very cool. And I know fleets are interested in it. We see a lot of engagement on our side, but you know, for, for fleets that are mid-sized, right, or smaller fleets, that the fleet managers are wearing a lot of hats, and now they go, great, I, I've never had to worry about where my fuel comes from before, right, like the source of it. Where do you start? How do I, you know, even in my smaller fleet operation, 100 to 500 trucks maybe, how do I get started? What's your advice for, for jumping into this and making it work for me still? Yeah, so from our standpoint, I mean, we're engaging with fleets right now in, in deploying our hybrid solution, uh, the hyper truck solution. Uh, you know, we'll be putting initial demos out uh, this year towards the end of this year. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for that fleet engagement. But I think, you know, one of the things that fleets are finding is solutions aren't really available yet. You know, you can't. You can't go down to the, the Volvo dealer or the, the Freightliner dealer and really just go pick up an electric truck off the off the lot yet. You know, we're not at that stage. So, you know, for, for fleet operators, I think, you know, getting engaged with your OEMs, getting engaged with companies like Hylion and really building out, you know, when is that product going to get launched and adopted and seeing how it fits for you. Right. I mean, there'll be fleets that BEV makes a ton of sense. There'll be fleets that our solution makes a ton of sense. Other fleets, you know, if you've already got hydrogen infrastructure coming into your facility, uh, maybe you're using it in forklifts or something like that, maybe that's a good solution for you then, right? So there, there are some areas where, you know, there, there's, you know, going back to our earlier statement, not, not all, not one solution fits all. And, um, you know, I think that's important for fleets to realize and just figure out what makes the most sense for them. And then, uh, you know, one of the things that often maybe gets overlooked uh, by fleets that we've spoken with that it's really important to pay attention to is just infrastructure, right? Because if you're going to move to BEV trucks, you're signing up for putting in recharging infrastructure at your depots. And, you know, we've heard some fleets share with us that like 
for a 150 truck terminal, they're getting quoted, you know, $30 million to put in recharging infrastructure, which for a lot of fleets, that's not going to work, right? Um, you know, one of the advantages we have with the hyper truck and using natural gas is there are already 700 stations already deployed across the U.S. that you can just drive up to and start refueling on, right? Um, you know, they're already there. And then you get to work with those those station providers to spec how much you, of the fuel you want to come from renewable natural gas and how much of it you want to come just from conventional natural gas, depending on you know what what your uh, your priorities are. Yeah, for sure. And as we've seen, uh, fleets and and OEMs and suppliers alike trying to move more to sustainability. Those partnerships are key. A lot of them, you know, service. You know, is one component that we haven't touched on either, right? Yep. It gets more complex in some ways uh, because it's it's not as familiar as the diesel powertrain, right? But there's oftentimes less complexity inherent in there. It's kind of a weird double edge where you have to retrain technicians on new technology, and you want to make sure that's safe. And again, just making those connections, right, on that that infrastructure um, and getting that ball rolling. So definitely uh, cool to see. So yeah, service is a, a big one, right? Because I mean, every truck. Depot out there knows how to service diesel trucks today. Um, you know, as we move to electric and natural gas and hydrogen, it's there's new games, right? I mean, one of the nice things with natural gas is uh, there are already you know service centers all across the U.S. that have trained up and know how to use natural gas. But electric hydrogen, it, it is new, and uh, you know what we're finding on the electric side of things is one, you have a lot less moving parts, so that's good because that just inherently means you're going to have less maintenance, but the uh, the interesting thing is that it's not really going and repair the vehicle. It's more going and replace parts, right? Uh, which is going to be a little bit of a change. I think truck centers today are used to go in, solve, find the problem, go solve it, go you know fix whatever is broken. Versus electric is going to be more if this module isn't working, replace the whole thing and ship the the uh, unit back to the manufacturer. Right. Yeah. Uh, and even in in like how what where, what those components are. Um, the specifics of that components, right? I mean, I was just thinking, I, I talked with Shell not too long ago about e-fluids, about fluids that'll specifically go into some of the electric powertrains that they're working on and, and all that good stuff. Uh, but it is it is a complex thing that is just a, a, a big sea change in that regard. Um, oh, I, I, I had one more. So, so I mean, <laughs> so do you have fleets that, um, do you feel like they're more open to that kind of a partnership? I mean, oftentimes fleets will buy diesels and then talk to other manufacturers and nameplates their next turn cycle and that kind of stuff. And this is requiring a, a more cohesive, almost partnership and and uh, give and take between the, the suppliers, OEMs and the fleets. Are they looking for that? Are they open for that? How do you work through that with your customers? So the nice thing we're seeing is that um, Everyone's taken the shift towards electrification so seriously that everyone, you know, all the OEMs are trying to figure out what path is going to make the most sense here. Fleets are trying to figure that out. Tier one suppliers are trying to figure it out. And right now it's a very, very collaborative space, right? And people are trying to work together towards solutions. I don't think, at least we're not seeing that people are really coming in and saying, nope, we're not going to work with others. We're just going to do it all ourselves, right? And that's that's been Hylion's approach. And that's one of the reasons why when we initially stepped back and looked at the ERX, you know, sure, we brainstormed about, you know, do we create the entire truck and the powertrain as well? And and we looked and we said, well, you know, the, the area for evolution here is really in the powertrain. I mean, trucks are great today. I mean, OEMs have done a fantastic job of improving them, improving aero, comfortability, everything, right? And we don't need to go reinvent that again, right? The area for evolution is the powertrain. And so that's where our goal is let's step into this market as a, you know, a powertrain provider, not a full vehicle provider. And let's use the chassis that fleets already know and love in order to be able to deploy our product on. And you know, the feedback we've gotten from fleets is they love that because you know, fleets have already kind of chosen. Do they want to use Peterbilt? Do they want to use Freightliner, right? I mean, they've made those choices. And now we're able to come in and say, you know, we're, we can you know, put our powertrain in those vehicles. Right. Yeah. And I mean, as much as things change, that still speaks to the supplier nature and the, the relationships that fleets have, have grown over the decades and how it's still very much a handshake business. So even with the fun technology and new changes, a lot of the same faces and, and friends that will help you out. Very true. And amazing thing is very different than the passenger car space, right? That's one of the big <laughs> questions we also often get. 
you know, with, with having just gone public, you know, a lot of retail mm-hmm. investor interest in Hylion. And people are like, what do you mean you're going to put a different powertrain in, in a car or in this truck? You know, like because people are thinking a passenger car where no way you'd ever be able to do that versus, you know, there's that difference of trucking. You know, these trucks are made very customized for the fleet that they're going to. Uh, in this sort of a model works where that doesn't work in the normal passenger car space. No, for sure. And even as uh, long as I've been covering the industry now, to your point, even how that is operating on the fleet level of specking and, and specking what you want on the truck from whom the supplier, it is in constant evolution. So it's fun to watch. <laughs> and this whole shift is exciting, right? I mean, everyone... Um, you know, I encourage, you know, fleets that are watching this, you know, get engaged in this, right? There's a lot of moving parts going on right now and uh, make sure you're, you know, you're part of this, uh, this shift because it's going to happen uh, and you want to be on the, the, you know, on the front end of it as opposed to, you know, trying to catch up to your competitors. So get engaged in it, start working with electric suppliers and, uh, you know, partake in this, this shift towards a much cleaner and renewable, you know, source of energy here. For sure. Thomas, thank you so much for catching up. It's great to see you. I'm sure I will talk to you again soon when all this evolves so rapidly in the next three months and we'll have uh, even more to talk about. Sounds great. Thanks for having me on. Take care.